I'm Brian Pruitt, tutoring high school biology. Today's topic, fungi. Yes, we are going to talk about the fungus, finally. Now, before I begin, let's just quickly go over the definition of a fungus again. They are multicellular, heterotrophic, and they get their food through absorption. That means they are growing on their food, and they spread out digestive juices and absorb what is digested outside of the fungus. Alright, now, one thing, there is one type of fungus that is actually unicellular, sorry there's one exception, we'll hit that later. Now, first off, some general stuff about the fungus. You think of fungi, you may think of mushrooms, you may think of molds, you may think of getting a one-up in Super Mario Brothers. No. What you think of as a fungus, the mushroom, is actually the fruiting body, the reproductive structure. The major mass of the fungus is made of this thing called hyphae. Hyphae are these thin, fibrous things like roots. They're not quite roots, though. These are what grow into the ground, can spread out over acres and acres. The largest organism in the world can actually be found in East Oregon. It's a gigantic fungus. Now, a big mass of these hyphae is known as a mycelium, plural mycelia. The other thing you should know about fungus, they have cell walls made of chitin. Okay, looking up close at hyphae, there are two different types. There's the multinucleated type, which does not have separations between cells, and the one with chance separation between cells, septic. Alright, now let's go into the different types of fungi. First up, zygomycota. These are the common molds, things you find growing on your bread. These will reproduce with something called a sporangia. If you look really closely at a mold, you can see these little things sticking up, and up here, spores will be released. Now you can do this yourself, the trouble is you'll just be that guy who grows molds. Alright, next up, ascomycota, the sac fungi. Yes, these will bloom and look a little bit like, well, sacs. These you produce through ascospores. And if you look at the sac fungi really closely, you'll find they produce these things called asci, singular ascus. They kind of come up and then curl around and explode at the top, releasing these ascospores. Then we have the basidiomycota. These are the club fungi. Yes, mushrooms belong here. These you produce through structures known as basidia. If you look at the underside of the mushroom, you'll see they have a bunch of, if you will, gills. Now, in these gills are basidia, which will release spores downwards. Of course, club fungi encompasses a lot more than just mushrooms. You'll find some of them growing in things that look like stars. Find some of them on, growing on trees. Lots of stuff in basidia mycotic. Alright, and the last two groups we're going to hit are the yeasts. These are the only unicellular fungi, and they reproduce through binary fission, just like bacteria. And then deuteromycotic. Okay, I have a bunch of question marks written down for it. That's because we really don't know how these things reproduce. We know that they're fungi, we think they must reproduce because they're still alive, but we haven't been able to observe a reproductive stage. Speaking of reproduction, let's look at the life cycle of a fungus. Most fungi go through something a little bit like this. We start out with a mycelium, a bunch of hyphae. This is actually a haploid form, which is to say they don't have paired up chromosomes. We represent that with a 1N. Diploid form pairs of chromosomes, we humans are diploids, 2N. Okay, so then two mycelia will meet up, and one will have to be a plus, the other will have to be a minus. These are effectively genders of mushrooms, but it's really hard to say one's a male and the other's a female, so we call them plus and minus. Then they'll form genitangia. This is when their hyphae start commingling, and finally they will fuse to create a nucleus, a fused nucleus, if you will. This is the first diploid structure, 2N. This will then push up a fruiting body, which will release spores. How it does this depends on, of course, which group of fungi it belongs to. Zygomycota, ascomycota, basidiomycota, so on and so forth. The spores are haploid and will grow into mycelia, which again are haploid, and so the cycle starts again. To recap, fungi are multicellular heterotrophic organisms that get their food through absorption. That means they grow on their food, release digestive enzymes outwards, and then suck in what has been digested. They have cell walls made of chitin and are composed mostly of hyphae, which are long, thin strands. A mass of hyphae is known as a mycelium, plural mycelia. Looking closely at hyphae, you can see that some of them are multinucleated, however others have division between cells, septic. The types of fungi are zygomycota, common molds, these reproduce through sporangia, ascomycota, sac fungi, these reproduce through ascospores, basidiomycota, club fungi, includes mushrooms, these reproduce through basidia, yeast, the only unicellular fungi, these reproduce through binary fission, 
In Deutero micata, the imperfect fungi, we don't really know how they reproduce since we've never been able to observe them doing it. The life cycle of a fungi usually includes a haploid, non-paired chromosome phase, which includes mycelia. If two mycelia of different genders, if you will, one plus, plus one minus, meet, they'll form a gametangia and then ultimately fuse their nuclei, creating a diploid 2N stage, where they have paired chromosomes. From this arise a fruiting body which will release spores, haploid organisms again, to recreate the fungi again. And the cycle starts. Alright, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Pierce. See you next time.